The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. Brought to you by Nadex. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday, every, good Monday morning, everybody. Tommy O'Brien with Tom O'Brien. Quite a start to the week. You got the Dow up 177 points, NASDAQ up 50 points, S&Ps up 14, right where we left off Friday. Good morning, Tom. No, Tommy, how you doing? Doing good, man. How are you? Good. Yeah. Um, action in the market, no doubt. Lots of numbers coming out this week. Uh, bottom line is that, uh, you know, you had that charge forward Friday. We'll see uh, what uh, today brings. You know, we get that uh, swing area. If we take a look at this uh, S&P out here, we go into the SPY. Um, you know, your, your swing point out here is, uh, what, 271.30. The low is 269. You know, that's one of them. The other swing point that it's coming out for today is going to be the 267.89, which was the April 30th swing. So we'll see okay. uh, what the, that baby can do out here today, man. Pretty remarkable when you look at 11 a.m. on Thursday, we're down 400 points. And from that level, 11 a.m. on Thursday, we um, were barely two trading days off and we're 1,000 points up in the Dow from where we were trading at the time. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Things move quickly. It, well, you know, it's wild is that and it's bringing up the Dow because it sounds so dramatic, right? You know what I mean? Yes, definitely. Whether it's down or up because of the bottom line is that, yeah, that's, you know, the bottom of this consolidation that we're in is basically laying out here at, uh, what, 23,340. Um, you know, we'll see how it shakes out. You know, thus far, you know, since the highs of January, we still have one, two, three, four lower highs. So you'd have to bust the uh, 24,853 mark, which was the high of April 17th, to basically say the trend has actually changed. Okay, you know? sure. Um, pretty yeah. wild. How about oil this morning as well, right? New, new, new domain in oil in terms of $70. Yeah, and, you know, it looks like the, you know, the propaganda war is definitely out there over the weekend. You know, you had... Uh, the Saudis turned around saying, yeah, they, they want $80 oil, and the Iranians are saying, no, we, we like oil where it is. So this is going to be interesting, you know, seeing, you know, who wins. You know, technically, yes. um, the bottom line is that technically this thing looks like it hit 75 bucks, which is just pretty wild. But you know what? Because we came down so fast in uh, 2014, you know, that, that number is out there, man. Um, you know, which is pretty intense because let's see, if we pull this back on a continuous contract, yeah, you're gonna see like it's once once we cleared that sixty six bucks, it's like, okay, it's like my god, it's when I, if I I just had that on a, a three year and if you put it on a three year you can't even see where the seventy five dollars is because you gotta get back to something over that to see what the lows were in 2014, which is, you know, that $75 area, you know what I mean? Okay. That could slow it down, you know, because when we came down in July of 2014, we went from $107. Sure, <laughs> definitely. It's like, wow. Yeah, that's... right down to $27. Yeah, exactly. Pretty intense, man. Definitely. You know? And, uh, you know, gold, we take a look at, uh, you know, the, the gold market out here, bottom line is that the, the volatility continues. Um, what's intriguing is that, you know, we are in, in the lower range. Anything under like 1315, let's say, is in, in the lower range, we're 1313. That being said, this dollar, man, this dollar has had the best counter trend bounce in years. And, you know, the equities really haven't not got hit, like the GDX is up today. You know, we hit, uh, let's see, we hit 92.825. That high from December is uh, 93.480. We'll see whether I can make it. You know, what we did have, Tommy, on, on Thursday and Friday, it kept testing the highs of Wednesday, which was Fed Day, and the volume was dying on the vine. You know, okay. Fed Day, we did uh, 38,000 contracts. That's great contract volume, right? Then we try to test on Thursday with 23,000, Friday with 25, 
you know, we're going to get the volume today. We're already at 12. So we'll see where this shakes out. You know, um, you know the beginning of the week, folks, great time to go over to the Nadex uh, platform because guess what? We get Bitcoin spreads. And this is, this is going to get wild because, you know, you had Bitcoin hit a high, what, uh, 96.28. Right now we're at 92.21. And, you know, you had the Berkshire meeting over the weekend, Tom, right? Yes. And uh, Buffett and Gates were slamming Bitcoin, like, big time. Yeah, I happened to see on CNBC one of their articles up there was Gates talking about that if he could short Bitcoin, he would. Um, yeah, well, he can. That's us Right, him up. I know. That's what <laughs> I first thought of. I said, come on, he's, he's a bright guy. I'm sure he knows that he can in some capacity in terms of... The, the technological geniuses he has at his fingertips at any moment. Um, so it's interesting. They, believe me, I was thinking the same thing. I said, you know, somebody worth tens of billions of dollars with technology geniuses surrounding them right. could short that if they wanted to, especially. In, no, no, yeah. big time. Yeah. And, you know, if we stay with uh, Buffett for a second, you know what was interesting? And this is how good they are at uh, public relations. Let me f find this for a second. So Buffett came out with... Berkshire's earnings over the weekend, Saturday, right, with the big letter, right? Okay. This was the first loss, and he's blaming it on the new regulations. Yes, I saw that article as well. Um, and or an A it, article it, about it, yeah. That's right. Let me see if I can find this thing. Anyway, it's it's a big loss too, man. You know, it's, it's not the first it, loss in like nine years. They yeah. had to say claim. Yeah. yeah. And he's blaming it on mark to market. Well, mark to market is where it's at. That tells you, <laughs> you know, bottom line is that where are you, the equities that you own? Um, you know, bottom, here we are right here. Let's see, operated income. That's operating income, let's see. Yeah, operating income was up, but the actual, there it is. So, loss per share, $692. Okay. Um, and what that is, and this is where Berkshire, you know, he's got a point in the aspect, well, what he's talking about is that these new regulations are not going to work for him because when he buys something, most times he never sells it. Sure. Um, that being said, guess what? It has hid a lot of things for a lot of amount of years in certain trades that he's had. Like, he could, he could be in a loss for four or five years. And whether he buys more or just hangs in, then it turns into a gain. And that's what you have inside of this. Do you know what yes. I'm saying? Because what happens now, folks, is that if you own, well, it doesn't matter what you own, you have to mark them to the market every quarter. So they own a huge amount of equities, bottom line. They have to mark them to the market. And, you know, that. Just like any other trader, that's the bottom line. That's that's what it is right now if you have to sell out. You yeah, know I mean? and so. I was looking at, so it, it seems like, you know, one of what, uh, I'm just going through a different article. So two of Berkshire's biggest stock investments, Wells Fargo and Coca-Cola, had tough first quarters with their shares falling 13.6%. I assume that's the Wells Fargo and 5.3% for Coca-Cola. So that's where you can see where normally they would probably just hold Wells Fargo and right. whenever they sell it in three or five years, they'll probably be above where they're trading at right now, but they're in the midst of a scandal and so they have to take the, the price of that investment as, as what it's at right now. Totally. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 177, Nasdaq's up 50, S&P's are up 11 and a half. Come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Thank you.
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 200. You get the Nasdaq up 55. S&Ps are up 12. Percentage-wise out here, what we have, we have the Dow right now uh, trading up 8 tenths of 1%. Nasdaq 7 tenths. S&Ps 6 cent tenths. And, uh, Tom, you know, we were just talking about the uh, Bitcoin. So uh, let's, uh, we know at the beginning of the week, uh, we get the, the spreads on the, inside the Nadex platform. Uh, where did these babies set up this morning? Yeah, we'll give uh, Bill Gates a lesson on how to short Bitcoin. Why not? Totally, man. Totally. Totally. Uh, so checking out the Nadex platform, I have the spreads up here right now. So right now you have Bitcoin trading 92.20, and the, the weekly spread opened at about 9,500, which is okay. give or take, you know, pretty much probably where it was trading at early close to this morning, 9,400. Um, so 9,500 being the square middle, it's $10,000 on either side, right? So 9,500, you'd have $5,000 in Bitcoin price to the downside, 5,000 to the upside. And for each coin here, you're going to be trading one-tenth of a Bitcoin. Okay. Okay, so if you want to trade dollar for dollar, if you're looking at the screen right now, I have it, you just enter 10 contracts, and then you can very clearly see that you have either $5,000 loss versus profit. They're going to combine to equal the $10,000, which is the $10,000 from 4500 to 14500 um, and it's pretty, you know, the, the cool thing about this is that we're so close to the middle of the spread that it's literally the bid and offer are $10 outside of the current contract. Let's say, you know, the Nadex um, indicative, which is Bitcoin, is trading 92.1960. And right now you have the bid 10. Um, okay, it's a little bit now. Well, it's jumping as we speak, but yes. 9200 by 92.30. So pretty close. Yeah. And that, listen, uh, you know, this is pretty cool because, you know, we've just gone. We know we, we have a range. I mean, uh, April 6th, you were at $6,513, um, you know, and it's, and just psychologically, this 10,000 number, right, is like, okay, are you going to hit 10,000 or not? Sure. Right? No, definitely. <laughs> and we, um, yeah, we had almost gotten there last week, but not quite. Right. So let's see how many uh, contracts we have right now. So oh, look at the size of the contracts. This is a big number. Yes. So, look at, you know, as no, we're pulling definitely. this up, Go for folks, it. Yep. Yep, at the CBOE, uh, 3,615 coins have got traded because that's one coin per contract. 
At the CME, 3,593 contracts. That's times five. That's yeah. a big number, man. That's that's basically 18,000. Yeah, about 18,000. Yeah. And um, so add I'm it up, not you're quite approaching. sure whether we've ever seen it that high. I Ooh. don't remember it approaching 22,000 contracts um, as of 1020. Um, yeah. That doesn't ring a bell, so it's definitely no. towards the higher end. That's a good number, man. Yes. So, you know, you, we get liquidity out there, and, you know, if you haven't, you know, Checked out the Nadex platform, folks. Defined uh, option trading uh, and defined risk is a great deal. And what does happen with Bitcoin, of course, is that most times you have yourself a decent spread. You know, uh, basically it's slowed down a bit compared to it was two or three months ago. But sure, and you're talking about a trading range when you say spread. Trading right? range, Just thank to, you. Yes, yeah. trading range, yeah, right. Yeah. So We'll see what happens. Beginning of the week. Well. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, we uh, we get lots of numbers coming out again. And I'll check this. This is this is a kind of an interesting story. So let me see if I can find this again. Yeah, here it is. Here on Spotify. So Spotify went public um, basically two weeks ago. Uh, huge uh, plus because of the fact that you know, I mean, they got themselves a, a nice market cap out here. Uh, yes. Let me uh, let me get this up. Sure. Uh, the news out here this morning, though. Right. Watch how this goes. You know, you talk about public relations. Two of the three major records labels that stand to gain more than one billion after selling their stakes in Spotify um, that went public last month. So Warner Music sold 75% of its stake at 400 million. Um, Sony sold one half of its stake for 750 million. And so w watch what their their public relations are saying though. We were the first major music company to announce that we would share proceeds with our art artists from the sale of the equity and digital services, in this case, Spotify. Cooper said, who is the CEO of Warner. Uh, just so there isn't any misrepresentation about the rationale of our decision, let me be clear. We're a music company, not by nature, long-term holders of public equity traded uh, companies. Publicly traded uh, This equity. sale has nothing yeah. to do with our view of Spotify's future. <laughs> sure it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Yes, no, I agree, right. Uh, you gotta love it. Hey, there's nothing like the spin, right? Sure. Pretty wild, man. It is. Um, the, uh, if we go take a look at, now, so what we also did on Friday, folks, this is where this is going to get interesting. You had this huge expansion of price on Friday, yet the volume wasn't there. You know, if we look, take a look at the SPY, what you're going to see is that you went up on 91 million shares, you were going into 103 million shares, you were going into 148 million shares, and you were going into 260, 294 million shares. It's going to be wild watching this whole thing shake out. And you know, Tom, one of the uh, Tigers, I'm in, uh, Jeff up in New York, when the S&P was coming down, last week, he texts me and he says, you know what, it's just amazing watching this. Watch when I put this up. Every time, folks, the S&P has got to the 200-day moving average, you have the buyers there. And I, so I text them back. I says, they're going to be there until they're not there. <laughs> sure. But, but look at this chart. This chart's Pretty impressive, cool. man. I mean. Yeah, so the yellow being the 200 along the bottom there. The yes. yellow being the 200. You know, and we, when we look at February 9th, folks, hit it basically as you know, for something that's two hundred and seventy dollars, um, it let's see, it was two fifty three sixty seven, and it went to two fifty two ninety two. Then, one day it was underneath it. Well, the next one would be March twenty third. The two hundred day was two fifty eight twenty four, and what it was, we went to two fifty seven eighty three. And we, well, one day we closed underneath it. That was April 2nd. And then last week, we basically went underneath it and closed above it. Pretty wild, huh? No, it is. I mean, it lines up very well. Even that area in um, early April where there's a few bars, I mean, it just kind of fits it perfectly in terms of, like, if you had a linear regression line along, you know, kind of the general yes. consensus bottom along all of those bottoms in, in early April, it would fit pretty well to where you just had a few lines below it, but nothing too dramatic. I know, man. It's and now I just brought this back further. If you, if you, and this is where the case is, you know, for a bull, because when you bring this back further, look at the last one of the last cool. downdrafts we had, November of 2016, did the same thing. 
You go back to June of 2016, did the same thing. Now, that being said, when, when I was doing the uh, goal report last night, Tommy, I was, I was playing with this. That, and that's why when I said to Jeff, it does until it doesn't, because guess what? When, when it does break down, um, like if we look at Facebook, you're going to see when they break, folks, they get there pretty dramatic. Uh, so if we bring up Facebook, let me see. You're going to see how it broke, but watch this. It, it, held, it, it, held, it, it held for a long, long period of time. Bottom line, until it didn't, you know. Facebook sure. held really nice on February 9th, you know, went right to it. Went topside and then just took it out, man. You know. Yeah. Now Pretty it's wild. floating right back above it, though. We'll see. It right? is. No, it yeah. is. It is. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up uh, 183, Nasdaq up 51, S and P's up 10 and a half. We're coming right back, folks. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then and head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 202, Nasdaq's up 61, S&Ps are up 12 and a half. Uh, gold, you know, it's going to be interesting, uh, Tommy, uh, where this baby's going to shake out. Uh, you know, dollar's still higher, gold's hanging tough. You know, we'll see where this uh, baby wants to go. Yeah, that gold's kind of been hanging between that 1305 and 1320 yeah. for like at least the last week, right? And totally. Some critical and, you know, levels, just like... Um, 
you know, interestingly enough, I mean, just like you could say crude with interesting levels kind of above where it's trading at right now in yes. terms of $70 and so forth, but gold for sure right at that lower level. Yeah, and you know, the, the, when we take a look at what, what does get intriguing here is that, so we had the Fed come out last week, uh, but it seems that the statement, you know, the market took it as basically dovish, you know, because the reason I'm saying that, you know, you get the notes and the bonds, the 10-year note is hanging over this 119.14 level, and that level, folks, that we're talking about there, you know, that's where it broke lower. Uh, and bottom line, the longer it stays above that level, it's like, okay, you know, the, the Fed is at 100, well, the Fed fund future rate is at 100% right now that they will go up 25 basis points at the June 13th meeting. But that, that being said, the market itself is saying, well, guess what? I'm buying some bonds. <laughs> sure, right. <laughs> you know. That's what it's uh, saying, definitely. No, right? And, Can't deny you know, it. No, exactly. You know, and that and what you have on top of that is that we have we are pushing out a huge amount of notes and bonds. Um, so it's not like the, the supply is very large, too, but the demand is still larger than the supply. So, yeah. So did you catch any hockey yesterday? Oh, I did. I did. I, I got. Uh, I, I got to see the uh, end of the deal, so it was it was pretty cool. The There's deal, no the deal. <laughs> um, <laughs> quite a finish to the Tampa Boston series. Props yep. to Boston for a good series, a good a good season, of course. Um, but we're excited about Tampa, living in Tampa, of course. So Tampa, and then you got Las Vegas Knights as well. They they advanced to the next round as well. Did they? I you know what I I was listening on the radio to the beginning of that, and I did. So they that's did. They cool. They man. got it done three nothing last night versus San Jose. So Vegas won their series four games to two. Tampa won their series four games to one over Boston. And you have tonight with Washington and Pittsburgh. So Washington up 3-2 in their series. So Pittsburgh okay. at home fighting to stay alive. And then you've got Nashville um, against, uh, who are we playing? Who's Nashville? Uh, I should know. Winnipeg, right? Yeah, Winnipeg. Okay. Yeah, because um, Winnipeg is the only Canadian team in it, which okay. is pretty and, sad. And so Winnipeg right. is up three games to two. So you got Pittsburgh fighting for their life and Nashville fighting for their life. Those are, and so that's, you know, and Tampa gets the winner of the Washington Pittsburgh series, and Vegas is going to get the winner of the Nashville Winnipeg series. I know, and it, as the Tigers are saying in the den, this is going to be wild, man, if it's Tampa Bay and Vegas. Oh, it's <laughs> going to be wild if it's anybody in Vegas, I think. Um, yeah. Just because of to have a, a championship in Vegas with Vegas being the hometown playing. Um, oh. That should be some excitement for sure. Yeah, it's too bad there's not a workshop out there. <laughs> That's right, man. I know it's too bad there's not anything going on out there. Well, there might be there might be a World um, Stanley there, Cup final going on out there. Yeah, that exactly. might be just enough. Exactly. I would love to go out there for a game, but I don't think I'd be willing to pay the price. Um, I know for I a know. Vegas ticket because you're going to be competing with the likes of oh. Caesar's Palace, Harrah's, and basically every high-end um, VIP. Yes. Host. That's what I was looking for. Host. That's You're not right. going to be competing with the actual VIPs. They don't buy their own tickets. You're going to be competing with hosts. They're going to be handing out those tickets to all their VIPs. So, can you imagine? I, that's it. I mean, I, I can't. I can't wait to see what a, a ticket costs because, legitimately, I mean, it's it's worth. That's why you have the clubs out there that are insanity because it's worth it to provide that type of service for people. When guess what? You're picking up. You're picking up the profits in other other areas, right? Yeah, and you know it's probably so cool. Could you imagine? I was, you know, it, it has to do with the no doubt the VIP service. Could you? I'd like to really uh, understand how many season tickets those big casinos bought because right off the bat, all that, of them that they could good, almost right. I mean, it's yeah. so it's such a drop in the bucket, right? Compared to what they're paying to be able to always have tickets for the home team playing, especially when you have a good home team. It's not a joke. It's it's a team competing for a world title. You know, anybody in Vegas, you go to the casinos, of course you're going to want to get brought by a limo to the arena, right? You go up to your suite, you go to your floor seats, wherever you want to end up. Um, and it's it's, it's You know, it's so crazy. It's cheaper than half the rooms that they, they comp you know, them, those right? clubs, right? Yeah. right? No, everything, right. Exactly. Right? And that's why I think they went on a, a pretty big spending spree for season tickets already, even at the beginning. And especially on, you know, the suites and stuff like that. Sure. Um, reading articles ahead of their first season, let alone right now. I can't imagine there's uh, 
it's just it's just the likes of like New York City as incomparable as in, you know you just have so much business revenue and in a town that is made to take care of VIPs you know yeah. it's it's a it's a service it's a social atmosphere so yeah I can't it'll be interesting to and, see and you know and you know as you and I that's why one well no yeah it's one of the reasons we like hockey so much too. It's only two hours and a half, so they're no, not right. away from the tables a long time. Right. right, no, no, yes, that's why the hosts will love it, too. It's not like a baseball game that can go five hours. Yeah. Um, seriously, right, four or five hours um, is a realistic for at least uh, sure. hockey. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, now you're in playoff season, man. They're going to be intense in terms of every host. I mean, if you're, right, if you're playing any type of table action, wouldn't you oh. say you better get me a seat to that game tonight? I would, oh, yeah. um, you know, oh, if you're yeah. playing any type of real action and there's so many people playing real action in vegas on a, a daily basis let alone the weekends any night of the week amazing amazing we'll see what yeah. happens you know they were already a powerhouse meaning las vegas but with all these sports teams they get oh. it's going to be over the top and man. that's this is just hockey i can't fathom what a football yeah. game is going to look like out there when um right right i'll Wild. just i'll be watching from the tv Inside the beautiful uh, winter Venetian, I don't. I don't think I want to brave the. Which is cool, right? Oh, no, that, totally. And that's you know that's where they even get more business, right? You I know? would. I would love it. I just. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit mayhem, man. I mean, Vegas is enough mayhem as is. You combine the mayhem of a normal NFL Sunday football game and the videos that roll out in terms of just the, you know, a great sure. time. But the parking lots, right, the pre-parties, you got people going. I mean, it's party central already. You add, you add that type of environment to it and uh, got to be aware of what you're walking into, I think. Action. Totally. Action. action everywhere. Let's get over and take a look at that uh, S&P out here. So uh, the, the future market here, if we take a look at the S&P futures... Uh, they got up to 26.79. You know, bottom line is that uh, just gave up uh, seven points. We'll see where this shakes out. I got this up on an intraday basis now. So you you, you pop tire. Um, let's see, we're eight minutes into this. It, this thing's going to basically try to get into the 67 mark. And, you know, if we break uh, below like 64, 26.64, it's like, okay, man, you, you get... Uh, you get some problems here. Um, we'll see. We'll see how this shakes out. The because we did have. Let's see. We didn't 26.82. You know, it's interesting here. We didn't even make the high of April 30th yet. Okay. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now trading up 148. We get the Nasdaq up 48. S&Ps are up seven and a half. Gold's down a buck. Coming right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. 
For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Are you an options trader that's looking for that extra edge when placing trades? David White will be hosting a webinar on May 16th, which is the Wednesday leading up to Options Expiration Friday in May, where he'll discuss in depth the methodology he uses for trading options near expiration, including swing trading setups and expiration day trading scenarios. Subscribers to each of Dave's newsletters, Path of Least Resistance and The Technology Insider, gain access to this 60 minute webinar, which will be archived if you cannot attend live. Dave has had some great option trades recently for his subscribers. See for yourself the trading methodology he uses when trading options by signing up today for either of his newsletters and we'll see you Wednesday, May 16th at 5 p.m. for option trading near expiration, analyzing swing trades and expiration day scenarios. For all the details and to sign up today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow right now up by 128, Nasdaq's up 45, S&P's up 6.5. It's getting a little soft out here, Tom. Yeah, we were up 210 in the Dow coming into the 10 o'clock hour, currently about 80 yeah. points off of that level, and S&P's barely six points positive. We'll see what happens. Some Pretty of the, well. um, did you see the news Nestle teaming up with Starbucks? So, oh, you know, I heard that. I didn't see it, though. Let's, yeah, uh, let's... so Nestle's going to pay Starbucks Oh, wow. Seven billion dollars to be able to license their goods worldwide. Um, Look at that. Holy cow. Yeah, pretty remarkable. And it's, it's, it's always remarkable when you think, you know, a company even like Starbucks in terms of, talk about, they definitely have worldwide reach, right? It's not an American company in terms of Starbucks all over the place. And even they decide to team up with a company like Nestle instead of trying to take it on their own. Um, but at the price of $7 billion, not a bad deal for, for Starbucks, I'm sure. Nestle's bet $7 billion on Starbucks to revive coffee sales. Okay, so... Upfront payment is for marketing licenses, no fixed assets. Imagine that. Wow. Right. I know, right? Just for the... That's an, yep. Yeah. In the third biggest transaction in uh, Nestle's 152-year history, the Swiss food giant is spending $7.1 billion for the right to market Starbucks products from beans to capsules, marrying its international distribution network with... Of course, the biggest name in, ja in uh, Java. That is amazing, isn't it? Yes. Holy cow. SBUX. Let's see if it's doing anything to the stock. <laughs> yeah, Starbucks is up a little bit. Let's see where it is. It was up um, coming into the open. Investors liked $7 billion for naming rights. And look at that. It can't even hold price. Wow. Oof, it it, it traded up to 59. It's at 57. And I, I guess, you know, Oof. that's pretty intense. That man. is pretty intense. Wow. Unreal. That. I wonder how that plays out, whether some investors feel like they might be leaving something on the table there, as in, you know, allowing Nestle to capitalize on their worldwide name versus Starbucks themselves capitalizing on that worldwide name in a better capacity. I don't know how else you don't rise on that news. Well, you know, you know what's interesting is that, so not, um, you know, chart-wise, but just personally, right? Yes. It, it, down in Florida, folks, and I'm sure this is in every, you know, city and state out there, we have, you have a few new smaller coffee companies, and I think, you know, between Starbucks and down here, we have Kawa, and it's not huge, it's not only, like, only 16 stores or something, but I happen to like the Kawa coffee better than Starbucks, because the Starbucks have got so big that, like, even if I buy them at the supermarket, it's more of the status quo now. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's kind of intriguing. Like, yes, okay, yeah. is that what's going on in the aspect, you know what I mean, that now Starbucks is just like buying Maxwell House when I was a kid. You probably don't even know Maxwell no, House. No, I hear you. Yeah. They're the mainstream brand versus yeah, um, right. the hip 
new, yes. awesome, trendy brand. And, um, and smaller batches, right? Also, okay. do you know what I mean? Which you know, which does come into play. You know, the bottom line is that they all started out a small batch deal. You get bigger, which you know, which makes sense. I mean, the whole thing makes sense, but. It's not what it was when it was actually starting. You know, sure. I mean? you get the distribution, you get the warehouse. How fresh are the beans? Where do the beans come from? You know, so yeah, quite a score story. No matter what happens with Starbucks stock, if we were the CEO of uh, Starbucks, we'd be loving it right now. Yeah, seven billion dollars <laughs> for some naming rights worldwide. Not a bad deal, man. Yeah. What is? And can those... you go back into Starbucks? What's the market cap for them? I'm just curious as to to take in a seven billion dollar yes. price tag. Seventy-nine billion. Not bad, man. No, that's that's a, that's yeah, that's that's. I mean, I'm saying right, like ten percent of the value of the company you just took in just to allow them in for cash, work. right? In cash. And the stock price doesn't even move. Right. Let me <laughs> pull this up for a second. That's. Yeah, look at that. They they, well, so they they only take in. Oh, this is intriguing. That this has actually gone down. You see that six point one billion in the first quarter. This is gross revenue. Six billion in the second. And it's not like they were going to be gangbusters next year, but uh, bottom line is that uh, seven billion in cash without operating is a pretty cool deal. Maybe, maybe it has to do with the. Um, I mean, all of their growth, not all. I mean, they got nine percent in the Americas, but forty-two percent growth in China. And maybe that's what investors are saying. You know, well, hold on a second. We were factoring in growth overseas for the PEs we're dealing with on this stock. And if you yeah. just sold off a lot of that growth potential to Nestle for $7 billion up front, maybe you don't have the growth that we, you know, thought you might yeah. have. Um, because that's, that's a big a, point. You know, that's China's a grown at 42%. I'm surprised that they don't have more of it broken down in terms of, you know, whether it's Europe or I guess, you know, how that falls in terms of they just have the Americas and then they have China and that's basically, and then they have channel development in terms of revenue. But I'm surprised that that's not broken down more geographically there. And no, you're absolutely right, because the Starbucks story for a long time has been China is a monster. We're growing exponentially in China. That's where our future is. And guess what? Well, the future might be there, but now Nestle's got a good chunk of it. I wonder, we'll hear more about that deal for sure, because how does that work out? Is that a forever deal? Is that a timeline deal, right? I mean, did we'll, I, we'll hear um, more as they get into that, because, I mean, if it's a forever deal, that would be a monumental deal to sell. I'm not sure how that. Okay, so they ink the deal to sell Starbucks coffees in supermarkets, restaurants, catering operations. They're going to sell their can... brand in its. A, they're going to have you know plans to use the Starbucks brand in its Nespresso and Dolce Gusto capsule systems. So kind which of which is cool tying uh, that, that together, that, right? Yeah, that that system is a pretty cool system. That uh, the Nes. Cat, uh, is it Nest, Nest Cafe? Yeah. yeah. Um, there are several. What, what I'm looking for is that how long is this deal for? That's, yeah. It's, it's uh, interesting it doesn't say it, right? I had read a couple articles today as well, and it didn't say it. And, um, you know, $7 billion isn't that much money to be able to use the Starbucks name worldwide forever if that's how it plays out. Yeah, I know. Hey, we'll find out. It's that's probably a fair value regardless. It's not like it's underpriced. I mean, the whole company is only worth $70 billion, so, you know, just to pay $7 billion to use their numbers, I mean, you can almost do a leverage buyout for, you know, right? I mean, you... Yes. So it's not um, like it was cheap money in terms of the whole company is only worth 70 and they just paid $7 billion just for their name to use their products overseas, but... Everybody That's loves coffee. Starbucks is going nowhere, so $7 billion. We'll see if they regret that in two or three years in terms of what China's trading at, right? Yeah, no, no, totally. And evidently, you know, bottom line is that we're going to be seeing a lot of advertising. We better call them up. Let them get it started. I mean, because they're claiming that that's going to be all marketing money, you know? Okay, Starbucks is going to use that money towards so marketing. It says, okay. Yeah, nice. You know, that they're, you know, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, you that's know? a lot of marketing money. Yeah, exactly. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 153, NASDAQ up 53, SP's up 10, 
And uh, we'll see what's happening with gold. Gold's got a little bid here. We went from a negative uh, buck and a half to up about 50 cents. Come right back, folks. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or Swim. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow right now at 171, NASDAQ up 59, S&P's up 11 and a half. And you just heard that promotion, uh, learn how to trade options. We get uh, swim lessons coming up next. Well, guess what? We get our man, Mr. Dave White, coming up. Right, Tom? That's right. A week from Wednesday, May 16th. Pretty remarkable that a week from Wednesday is going to be May 16th. We're going to be in June and Ooh. July in no time, man. Uh, so options expiration this month is Friday the 18th. And so Dave White, he put together a workshop, subscribers to either of his newsletters. So Path of Least Resistance, which you click through on the front page, but Tech Insider as well, all subscribers for Dave's newsletters. Option trading near expiration, analyzing swing trades and expiration day scenarios. So that'll be Wednesday night, nine days from right now, five till six. I encourage people to get in there, check it out. If you're new, you get 30 days money back guarantee. Um, because the reason why Dave's setting that up is because he starts talking about some of those option possibilities, what he may be yes. looking for. Um, excuse me. Whoops. What he may be looking for as the... 
uh, exploration approaches leading up to that week and so forth. So that's kind of the idea of this workshop. So I encourage people to get in there so you can kind of start to see him begin to talk about what he's looking at as exploration looms in nine days. Auction, options exploration in nine days, Tom, for May. I know. We're there. And, you know, it's so cool, folks, because, you know, we got some volatility in this Oof. market. And that's what you need. And, and what happens, you know, and that's why Dave is doing it two days before the fact. Um, your premiums are basically gone. You know, uh, they're very low. Let's put it this sure. way, coming into that area. So, you know, you do have some nice risk versus uh, your reward setups. Pretty cool, man. The last thing I was just going to say, and it's also really cool with the the actual VIX being so low that you're yes. not forced to pay some some huge volatility sometimes, depending. But you know, to to anticipate that move, especially with the VIX under 15 right now. No doubt. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. we got swim lessons coming up next. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, myself. Thanks, Tommy. Have a great one. It's safe one. Thanks, Tommy, too. Oh. Yeah, go get them, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.